So welcome to State of the Week. My name's Andy Clark and joining me today is Tommy Coyle, fresh from a valiant effort against Chris Algieri at Madison Square Garden last Saturday night. Tommy, we'll get to that, but first of all, I think we'd better have a, a life and times of Thomas Coyle of Kingston upon Hull. <laughs> You're not finished yet, the career's not over yet, but let's just have a look at some of the some of the key moments. I think the fight where most fight fans became aware of you was that one against Derry Matthews, which was early in your relationship with, with Jamie Moore for the Commonwealth lightweight title. And you boxed really well that night. You boxed to, to plan, to order. It was all going perfectly, to be honest. You were ahead on the cards. Derry Matthews himself admits that. Anybody watching it knows that. And then he pulled out a big left hook, I think it was. And unfortunately, that was that. What, uh, what are your memories of that one? Oh, geez. Um... I thought I'd been hit by a train. I remember the referee counting. I remember, well, I don't remember the referee counting. That's the thing. Uh, I remember getting up and I was like, why are you counting me? I didn't actually know I'd been knocked out. I'd been hit that hard. The, the fight, I, you know, I boxed brilliant. Probably the best I've boxed. Um, you know, boxed to orders, boxed to a game plan. But just that inexperience, I, I thought I had him. Um, and I wasn't happy or content with just winning you know a routine points win I wanted to try and really steal the show and knock Derry out and um, Jamie had said to me all through the camp he said Derry Matthews he said I know him he said he's at his most dangerous when he's hurt and uh, I was getting him to that point of you know being hurt and you know he certainly was dangerous and I put my foot on the gas to try and stop him get him out of there and I just walked on to an absolute peach of a, a left hook Oh, it's a good, good fighter, Derry Matthews. Had a win yeah. and a draw against Anthony Crawler. Uh, won a WBO interim fight with Terry Flanagan for the for the world title. He was a really, really good fighter. So there was no kind of shame in that loss whatsoever. The fight that most people will remember you for, I think it's fair to say, is the one against Daniel Brizuela, where there were what eight knockdowns, I think it was in total, yeah, I think four we, each. Yeah, um, I think it was a. We was both deducted two points each as well. The scorecards was like a Sudoku. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was, it was one of those occasions where you would have found out a lot about yourself. I, mean, I was talking to Jamie last week, Jamie Moore, and, and he was saying that you were in the gym one week and you were asking him about his fight with Matt Macklin, a yeah. gruelling fight that anybody who watches Sky Sports for more than about 25 minutes will probably see it at some point. It's, it's that good, it's, it's repeated a lot. And you're asking him, do you think I'd be able to dig down and do what you did against against Macklin? And, and he said, look, well, I think so, but we'll find out. And yeah. then mid-fight against Brizuela, he just leaned in and said, do you remember that conversation we had? Yeah, this is your this is the this is your moment now. Yeah. And he, he asked me, he said, have you got it? You know, show me you've got it. And uh, you never know if you've got it until you you know you put in the fire, so to speak. And that was it, it was a hellacious fight. Uh, I never expected that type of fight. You know, I'd not prepared for that type of fight. But I've always been a, always been a tough kid. Um, I told some stories in the fighters meeting um, last week in, in New York about where I get a lot of my, my grit and my determination from. And I think it's just the upbringing I've had. I really do. Um, just being a, a boomerang, you know, refusing to lose and um, having that you know, great perseverance element. And it did announce you to the, to the boxing public as somebody that would be must-see viewing, somebody that they would want to watch. And that, that's really, in, really important. You know, it's, it's, it's crucial, really, for a fighter that they're popular, that they're entertaining, yeah. that TV likes them, that promoters like them for exactly that reason. I, you know, I've never ever claimed to be a world-class fighter with you know, skills that pay the bills, but... You know, I'm, a, I'm an honest fighter, a hard-working fighter. I'll always give 110%. I'll always give value for money. Um, and, you know, I'll put bums on seats. I, I pride myself on that. And then there was the win against Michael Katsidis, yeah. which was uh, an easier night for you than Brizuela. You got rid of him fairly early on. He wasn't the fighter that he had been in years gone by, but he was still a good name. And, and I know that he arrived there with plenty of confidence. We, we were hearing stories in the build-up to that about how good he was looking in the gym because he'd been training in Manchester. Me too, yeah, he was training down the road and 
like throughout the whole camp, I was so nervous. I was, I was scared to death, really. You know, I'm not scared of getting hurt, but just scared of losing because it was in my hometown. It was a big fight, a big name. You know, he'd, he'd earned his reputation as the Brit Bash. Every time he'd come to our, our shores, he'd won. And um, you know, he'd been in there with the likes of, of Marquez and you know, Hurt Marquez, who was, was a phenomenal fighter. Um, so it was a big, big challenge for me on a, on a big stage in Hull, top and top in the bill. And I'd expect and anticipated, you know, another Brazuela style fight, tough fight. Um, and you know, Jamie got the tactics spot on that night. We had a five second rule and all the time uh, we were sparring, it was don't sit in the pocket for less than, um, for any more than five seconds. He said, and on three, count, count to the left hook, so he was going one, two, three. So I was timing his shots as he was unloading on me, as he always had done, and uh, I caught him with a perfect shot. And yeah, I, you know, knocking Michael Cassidis out in two rounds in Hull in my hometown was, it was up there with some of my, my greatest nights. And what it did as well was it, it set up a fight that had been cooking for a little while at Matchroom and, and, and Sky as well had been, had been building towards, which was you against Luke Campbell. Both mm. whole fighters, both same amateur club, bit of history between the pair of you. And that was taken outside. It was, it, it was some evening that, it was some build up too. And just, it kind of highlights, or did at the time, where boxing had managed to get to, that you could put two fighters together like that for what essentially was a local derby yeah, and, was, and draw that kind of crowd. It was East versus West. It was Hulkingston Rovers versus Hull FC. Um, you know, a gold medalist versus, you know, like a people's champion sort of thing, you know, a, a lad off the estate. And because we'd obviously grown up together, um, boxed in the the same amateur gym, so, you know, shared hundreds of rounds together. You know, there was a lot of interest there. Luke was, you know, a decorated amateur. He was a favourite. He was known as the classier, better boxer. But was it too early for him? Um, and people thought I might have been too much too early for him. But you know, Luke boxed fantastic that night. Um, skills paid the bills, and he got the win. But it was a great night, it was a great event, it's a great feature in my scrapbook. You know, 15,000 people in an outdoor uh, arena, probably 10,000 of them being locals, was, it was a special night. It's one I look back on with, with fond memories, despite losing. He's now got Vasil Lomachenko. That's done, as we understand it. Yeah. We're just waiting for a, an official date and a venue to be announced. So I'd imagine that you would want him to beat Vasil Lomachenko because then it makes your performance um, look all the better. Yeah, of course. I, I've said this before. I, I'd love Luke to go in there and, uh, you know, put on a great display and get the win. And I think Luke, you know, he's, he's got all the attributes to make it a real tough fight for, for Lomachenko. He's tall, he's a southpaw, he's got a great amateur pedigree. He's, stylistically, um, he's, not, he's not my, he's, he's not a fighter I'd I enjoy watching, I love watching because I'm a bit of a throwback guy, I like your guys and your wards. But, you know, he's a, he's a boxing pugilist, he's, he's an excellent, you know, boxer. Well, it'll be a tough job for, for Luke, no doubt about that, but that's what, that's what you come into the sport for. So you stepped up then to super lightweight, and I remember the fight at the end of July in Leeds 2016. Mm -hmm. I commentated on that one against Tyro Nurse. It was close, it went the yeah. distance, you put him down once, it was close and I remember at the end how, how distraught you were I'm that disgusted. it hadn't quite gone your way. Devastated, I thought I'd nick the fight by a point because of the knockdown, I genuinely did, I put my heart and soul into the fight. Um, probably did too much in the earlier rounds. I remember Jamie saying in the corner after two or three rounds, just calm down, you're emptying yeah. the tank too soon. Yeah, probably uh, put too much into the earlier rounds. However, I did think I'd won the fight by a point, um, but you know I was fighting away, he was the champion. I didn't get the decision. Uh, and, and to be honest, not many people know, but after it, I struggled for a while, you know, mentally, I wanted a great place, um, and 
you know, it was quite a tough time for me um, mentally. But I come again and, you know, I stood by my strategy, what I, I promote in all the schools with all the kids about perseverance and working hard and making sacrifices. And I managed to come again and, you know, I'm sure we'll go on to talk about my... My, my greatest night. Well, it was hard. It, the 2017 was a hard year for you because yeah. I remember you fighting Rakim Noble in Hull at the end of February on the undercard of Gavin McDonnell, Ray Vargas, and it wasn't supposed to be Rakim. Kofi Yates, I think it was yeah. originally, then he had to pull out. And you won the fight, but Rakim landed a, a big right hand on you, I think, quite early in, that, round, in yeah. the second round, and, and that caused some damage to the eye and then throughout the rest of that year I think we were supposed to have a fight against Tyrone McKenna yeah an injury no, it was actually uh, the other way around I was supposed to fight Tyrone McKenna um, after Tyrone Nurse but I pulled out just because again I was struggling mentally um, I was toying with the idea of retiring because I ended up in hospital after the Tyrone Nurse fight um, and then when I fought Raheem Noble in the, the February I fractured my eye socket ended up in hospital again. When I arrived in hospital, I didn't know if it was my brain or my eye, because um, the pain was actually in my head. And, and it scared me, it really did, because, you know, I've said before, I've got two beautiful children at home, and you know, the best title I could ever have is, is the title of being a dad. Um, and I need to be there to, to show them the way. Um, you know, read them a bedtime story, there's no, there's no reading them a bedtime story if you can't see. Um, or function, so I toyed with the idea of retiring, and then I got the opportunity to fight for the Commonwealth title, and that was really what kind of got my juices flowing. And I thought I've got an opportunity here to to go out and win a Commonwealth title, and you know achieve a, a dream really. Well, that was against Sean Dodd. That was last April on an Amir Khan undercard. So you're away again. It was in Liverpool that one, I think. Yeah and Sean Dodd, obviously, from, from Birkenhead. Before that, you, you were lined up to fight Lewis Ritson for his British lightweight title, and, and that didn't happen either. So that Commonwealth title fight came at exactly the right time, and it, it was do or die for you at that point, really, because, yeah. as you've said before, you'd won some uh, governing body ranking belts, but what you really wanted was a British title or a Commonwealth title, one of those proper titles, if I can yeah. call them that, that, that when you're a Commonwealth champion, you will never not be a Commonwealth champion another day for the rest of your life. And that's what yeah. it's about, really. And it was a really good performance against Sean Dodd. I think everybody was not surprised. It wasn't like we all thought you were done, but you really did bring it that night. Yeah, I mean, I'm not discrediting the, the IBF internationals, the WBCs, WBOs. You know, I've got a few of them, but there's nothing like a British Commonwealth or European title. You know, it's a, it's a proper title, what? you know, always a bit of respect. So it was something I wanted to do. It was a fight I was really up for, really motivated for. Um, and it was a great, it was a great fight on paper. And, and the whole camp, you know, I was so tuned in, so switched on and I, and I got the game plan and the tactics right. And I think for the first time in my career, I actually listened and, you know, I didn't veer from the, the game plan. Cause you know, I, I am known for, you know, well, you, you admit it, don't you? you? You did it last week, actually, when we were talking to you ahead of the fight. You said, listen, I'm a better boxer than people give me credit for. Mm. I just don't really choose to let people see it because it, I would rather have a fight. The, well, this is it. The thing is, I've actually got quite good boxing ability, um, but I don't use it because it bores the life out of me. And it's actually harder for me to box and think it, it tires me out much more. <laughs> Whereas if having a fight is... I could do it for 15, 20 rounds. When I get in a rhythm of just having a fight, I can go and go and go. But having to, you know, um, use my brain and think and, and play chess, as I call it, is tiring. But I was talking to Frampton about this, and, and he said that the first time he sparred you when he joined the gym, he said to you afterwards, because you boxed him. Yeah. Uh, he said to he you afterwards, it. why don't you do that more often? You're so much well, better than I thought you would be. Kyle's got a lot to answer for for the success in my career um, of late, I think, because uh, I'm a bit of a fanboy, you know, I, I remember meeting him, uh, we laugh and joke about it now, and I asked him for a picture um, before he come to our gym, and he reminds me of it all the time, by I bet the way. he does. 
Um, but you know, for so, for someone like Carl Frampton to say that to me, it meant a lot, and it made me start believing in my boxing ability, um, and you know, practicing, uh, using my boxing ability a bit more, and it showed in the fight against Masha Dodd because I knew Masha was tough, he was gritty, probably as tough and as gritty as me, and um, I knew if I wanted to win that Commonwealth title and realise the little dream I had, I had to do something different to to get something I never had. So once you got that, you then set your sights. Once the matchroom USA deal had been done, that you'd like to go and fight in America, and you featured on a really good show in, in Boston. Pulled Eddie Hearn's pants down, which went viral. <laughs> that went around the world. That was, and I think, more exciting and more. The fight was good. The fight was good, though. The fight was good. I think people. Now that's definitely what people take yeah, away from that it's trip. Brilliant. Well, and you know what? Fair play to him. He gets. I say this all the time, but he gets some stick, and he's not everyone's cup of tea. But he can take a joke, though. He can. He's got some banter as Eddie, and uh, you know what? He's always been bang on with me. But the fight was good against Ryan Kilchevsky. It was a good match because uh, he. He come, he, he come yeah. to have a go. He was, stylistically, it was both very similar. Yeah, and that's what made it a good fight. Mm. And that's what you that's what you wanted. That's yeah. what you needed. And then when you got the call to oh, fight Chris Algieri at Madison Square Garden, I think it was supposed to happen before June the first. Yeah. But he had he got cut by a headbutt in mid January in his fight. Yeah. You had some hand I problems. I broke my hand in the so fight. Yeah. It got put back and put back. Which turned out to be oh, perfect. Absolute. Couldn't, couldn't have happened, landed any better. So to say that, you know, three days ago I was uh, at Madison Square Garden having a tear up with a former world champion is something I'll never forget. Just the, the weighing, by the way. The way You got a great cheer at the weighing. What, what about that? I couldn't believe it because he. it was in New York. He's from New York. I thought, oh, I'm the one that's probably going to get booed, but. I it was believe, the other way around. Did, honestly, the, the fans, they made it so special for me. It was a, it was a proper great experience. Uh, he's a really good lad too. You yeah, know, I had a bit a of a nice chat with him. He's a nice guy. He, he was laughing when he was getting booed at the weigh-in because he understood that yeah. it's a Friday afternoon and, and it was almost all Brits there. And the fight itself was a, was a good fight. You know, he, he'd beaten Ruslan Profondikov to win that WBO title. He'd gone 12 rounds with Manny Pacquiao. Had a pretty decent fight with Amir Khan. Yeah, and he's fought them all. That's it, that's it. The, these are top, top names. And you had your moment in the second round. You, I mean, me, me and Matt Macklin were commentating on that one and big over the top right hand, hurt him badly. He admitted it afterwards, followed up with a nice left hook. And if he wasn't, as experienced as he is, I think you probably would have finished him. That that's what that was the difference. Um, he was just a better fighter, full stop. Um, he was much more experienced, and he used it. I hurt him in round two. He didn't, um, you know, get uneasy. He he settled. He, he covered up. Um, he didn't panic under under pressure. Um, he just sat back on the ropes, covered up. Um, recovered, regrouped, went back to his corner, took some advice on board. He come out in the next round, and uh, he, st he he started to box a different fight. In round four, he caught me with a terrific body shot, which you know, really really hurt me. Took the life out of me. I think if you've ever been caught with a body shot, you'll know what I'm talking about. It it really did take a lot from me. It's a classic coil reaction to the body <laughs> shot, though. It was on the far side of the ring from us, but you. You got back onto your hands and knees quite quickly and that made me think that you were going to beat the count and then you punched the canvas. At that stage I thought, well, he's definitely going to make it. Yeah. And then you kind of ushered him in as you were on your knees. Well, it was that great. Was it. My mentality had changed and I thought, right, I'm in a fight. Um, i got to bite down on this gun shield and I've got to have it with him. Um, and he was so big. He was so big, so strong. When, when I was close to him, I couldn't manoeuvre him. Um, to get some of the shots off that I wanted. His arms were so long, so when he did cover up, he covered his full body. Um, and he was cute. He was real, real cute. Um, you know, he disguised the left hook what he delivered to, to, my, to my body with, with a, you know, a touch to the head. He, he was a good fighter. I was in there, you know, above my, my pay grade, if you like. He was a better fighter. And as gutted as I am, as devastated as I am that it didn't go my way and I can't go on to realise a world title dream, I'm OK with being beat by a better fighter. Um, there's, no, there's no harm in that. I just wasn't good enough. 
but I trained hard. I live, you know, the life. I'm an ultimate professional. I don't mess around. Um, I just, just want to win. Well, no regrets because you, you yeah, left it all in the ring, and the way it finished. In a way, I thought it was. It was kind of quite heartwarming because it showed that special relationship between you and Jamie because I think he made absolutely the right call. As you've been saying to us, you'd started to suffer from a bit of double vision. The last 20 seconds of the round, he, he was picking you off and I was thinking to myself, maybe Jamie will call it. The, kind of the way he did it, it was, it was like an older brother talking to his kind of, you know, troublesome younger brother, just, yeah. just, just firmly but gently saying, now that, that's it, I that's it, I cannot let this go on. I apologised to him yesterday because like, I watched the, um, that, the stoppage back and uh, I'd used the word, the F word, um, and I said, oh, I didn't mean that to you, Joe, because obviously I, I've never answered him back in all the years I've trained with him. I have the utmost respect for him. I love him to death. He is, he is like family. And I said, I, I wasn't swearing at you, Jay. I said, I was just, you know. It's just a situation. It's just in general, I was just devastated that he had pulled me. Because I was thinking, I like, it's sat here now. I'm regretting telling him that I was seeing double vision. I probably won't in 10 years when I look back, but I'm regretting telling him because still in my mind, the way I think, I'm thinking, if I get through round nine, round 10, I might get him out of there in 11 or 12. I might grind him down. That that that's always. I'm always going to try and go to the end. I'm like I'm never going to stop trying. I'm going to keep fighting for every second of every round. It's just the way I am. And um, but as Jamie said, I needed to save you from yourself. And that's a sign of a great coach and a good person and someone that cares about you. And, you know, he come to the hospital with me after, and he he won't. You know, he didn't leave my side. Jamie Moore is a good man, and um, I've said it a million times. He ain't just made me a better fighter; he's made me a better person. Because in our gym, you can ask any of them, you can't have an ego. You can't, you can't even like yourself a little bit. It's just Jamie just winds you, he tells you to wind your neck in, and he brings you down, and that's why the gym's flying. It's such a good place to be. No, it's great. It's great. You look, you look at all the lads up there, Rocky, uh, Jack Cattrall, Carl Frampton, Martin Murray. The fun you have is, is obvious. It's like but... a museum for me. You can imagine that, can't you? Yeah. Uh, I go in the gym and there's all these great fighters in there. In there. But everybody works hard as well. That's, yeah. that's, I think that's the key to it. So, finally, what, what next, I guess? And the way I look at it, you've had two entertaining fights in front of that US audience now particularly that last one against Algeria, which a lot of people will have seen. I wouldn't want to see you in as deep as that again, but someone, a good match, a good even match. If you put Tommy Coyle in a good even match, you know you're going to see a good fight. Mm. And there is not a boxing card in the world that does not need a kind of guaranteed all action fight. Yeah, I, I, mean, I really don't know what's next for me. I, I can't give you a, a, a truthful answer right now. Um, I need to go away, have some time and think about it and ask the people around me who love me what, what they think I should do because their opinion matters. Um, I've got two kids and, and one on the way. Um, I need to get out of this game with all my faculties intact so I can be a good dad, continue to be a good dad. Uh, that, that is the most important thing in my life. Um, but as I said, I love fighting. I, I'm a better person for fighting. It takes the edge off. I said it's, it's like a, some people have a glass of wine to take the edge off on a night. Well, fighting is the same for me. It takes the edge off. I'll go and if I'm ever stressed, I have a spa for eight rounds in the ring just to, to feel a bit at ease. I'm only interested in scrapbook fights. I'll be honest. If they offer me a fight and it, it really excites me and I know it's going to be a tear up, I'll have it. Um, if those around me let me. Uh, I just, I, I don't know, I, I honestly don't know where I'm at at the minute. I just, I need some time. But I know when I do finish, I'm really, really going to miss the game. That's for sure. But it's inevitable, everybody has to finish someday. And maybe finishing at Madison Square Garden won't be a bad finish after all. Some people have won too many fights. I don't want to be that guy. I don't ever want to finish on a fight where they say he's got nothing left. 
I finished on the Madison Square Garden job. Looking at what people have said after it, they'll, they'll remember me as one, not the greatest fighter in the world, but two, somebody who will always come to fight, give value for money, and um, I just want I want people to just say I was a good kid. Stop my kids in the street when I'm older and say, your dad wasn't the greatest fighter, but he was a decent human being. Well, I think going out on the back of that performance at MSG on Saturday, I think that would be a perfectly good place to leave it. But as you say, you just need a little bit of time to, yeah, to sure. think about it and just decompress and see what you feel is the best next move for you. And, and obviously, the opinions of those around you matter. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, has I it? I actually really enjoyed it, that going, going over all the fights. Yeah, as it always is. Um, well, that's all for this week's State of the Week. Join us again next time. Sky Sports. Feel it all.